Hello YouTube and welcome to the channel. Now then, in today's video we are going to be looking at my Huina excavator here uh, with regards to fixing it and upgrading it at the same time. Uh, now if you're at all familiar with Huina excavators, you may or may not know that in the boom here, in order to make the arm articulate, there are three individual motors driving three individual gearboxes. And in these gearboxes lie three little slipper clutches that if too much pressure is, app is applied to one of the gearboxes, it basically slips and you lose drive. Now they're there obviously to stop the gearboxes from getting damaged if too much pressure is applied. But at the same time, like I say, if you're at all familiar with these, um, they don't actually allow the boom and the bucket to to dig really which is the whole point of having an excavator um they actually do a fantastic job of protecting the gearboxes and the and the motors but when it comes to actually shifting some soil apart from any really loose and light material um they the slipper clutch just slips and uh, you they just click and you can't do anything uh, now there are loads of mods available on the internet to uh, lock these slipper clutches up but if you do the gearboxes don't last very long, uh, go figure. So what happened was with this, the last time I used it, I, I did modify the bucket and the middle box. And lo and behold, uh, 30, 30, 40 minutes approximately. Um, and they both began to, they both stripped gears off the gearbox. So what I want to do basically, is I want I do want this thing to be able to dig uh, loose material, wet sand and stuff, because that's the whole point of having an excavator. So there is a kit available. Um, you can get these on Banggood or AliExpress. You can get these on eBay, all sorts of places. And you basically replace these three uh, little gearboxes and motors in the boom uh, with these servos. Now these servos, the, the, the outside rotates and the middle remains fixed on several points. And they they basically got like a... a a spiral gear drive inside and these as that rotates obviously that's fixed and uh, this rod inside uh, moves in and out and that moves the arm in the relevant direction so hopefully today that's what we're going to do today on this excavator uh, we're going to replace all these um, original gearboxes uh, with these three servos uh, so hopefully give the arm a little bit more power well it will give the arm a bit more power now this can be quite involved because you've also got to remove obviously the gearboxes inside but you've also got to cut uh, the boom in various places to allow these uh, to sit inside the arm so that's that is basically what we're going to do today we're going to fit this kit uh, to this arm and hopefully um, give it a bit more power so anyway first job is to actually remove the arm off the excavator now we've also got to make a note of where or what wires do which uh, motor and gearbox uh, because we've got to obviously plug these into the correct um, place otherwise uh, when we operate the remote control it'll probably do all sorts of funny things so anyway the first job is to detach the arm from the excavator and that generally means we've got to remove the body first so enough waffle let's get into it Right then, that's basically the boom loose from the excavator. It's still connected uh, to the to the board by some wires. Um, to remove the boom, first you've got to remove uh, the, the battery holder, basically, and there's, there's six screws underneath which you have to undo. You just turn the tracks to different positions to gain access to them. Uh, you've also got to remove the little cab there. There's only two screws that hold that on, and that just sort of slides out. There are uh, various wires attached to these bits and pieces, so you just got need to lay them down next to next to the excavator. Um, but now we've got the boom free of uh, the excavator body itself. What we need to do is um, we've got to remove the wires on the base motor, but we need to sort of make a, a note of where these wires go and what they do, because uh, later on, obviously, when we fit the servos. Uh, we'll need to put the servos, connect the servos to the right wires. Otherwise, like I say, the the, the controls they'll do all sorts of funny things. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first off I'm going to remove those two wires on that base motor first, uh, mark them up what they are, and then uh, we'll hopefully be able to gain access to the rest of the wires uh, which are in the boom. 
Right then, now that we've removed the boom and we've split the two halves of the boom cases, we can see the little gearboxes inside. And it's these uh, gearboxes that have in fact gone, uh, they will be stripped inside. Uh, so what we've got to do is remove them and then we're going to replace them basically with these servos. Now these servos are going to have to sit on the outside, which means that we're going to have to cut uh, various bits of plastic out. Uh, from the tops of the boom in order to get these to fit. We've also got to trim uh, some of these posts off here uh, because the servo is going to basically going to go there and there's going to be a pin that's going to go through this bracket uh, all the way through the servo uh, to the other side. So now we've just got to make a note of which wires do what, uh, remove the gear, old gearboxes and I'm going to use my little Dremel with a little grinding wheel on to start cutting the plastic out. OK then, to cut the necessary holes in the boom to accept the servos, I'm going to be using this uh, generic Dremel here. Um, it's really useful actually if you've got one of these with a little cutting wheel because it does make the job a lot easier. Now I've basically got to remove this piece of plastic here. Uh, it's only actually attached uh, to uh, this side of the boom. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to use the bracket on top uh, to mount the new servo. Uh, after we've done that though, we need to cut uh, a hole in the top of the boom to accept the main body of the servo. Well, I've just cut that little bit of a bar out. It's not the neatest job in the world, I must admit. And I've marked out on the boom where the hole has got to be to accept the body of the servo. So I'm going to go ahead and chop this bit out um, and see if we can't get the servo to fit. So that's the hole for the bucket servo finished. Uh, as you can see, that's the sort of arrangement we're going for. We've got to leave a little bit of room to let the um, servo actually pivot on that pin. I, incidentally, I've drilled two holes in those two brackets there um, just to allow that pin to obviously go through. It does go right the way through the servo as well. So basically what we've got to do now is repeat the process on this portion of the boom, cut that bit out again, cut a, a hole for the servo. There is actually... Uh, some marks on the arm where possibly uh, the servo needs to fit uh, because there is a version of this uh, with these type of servos on but it's I think it's an all metal I think it's an all metal version um, but anyway um, I'll get cracking with this and uh, See you in a minute. Right then, that's the second servo in position. I've uh, cut the hole out for it. Just drilled out the brackets to accept the pin that allows the servo to pivot. And also drilled out the brackets at the front there. Pushed a pin through just to give me an idea of where everything goes really. But as you can see, it's starting to look uh, like we've got the motors in position for the boom. The third one, it's a bit of a strange one, it sort of goes there and uh, attaches via a little bracket at the bottom. So I have to use that hole uh, that's already in the boom and it goes through the middle of the servo there. Uh, so we're going to use that as our pivot point. So I need to cut some sort of a hole out here to allow that servo to sort of pivot uh, and push the boom up and down. But it's starting to come together. Uh, anyway, if, anyway, this is a sort of job. If you've got no patience, you really should avoid <laughs> doing this. Um, it does take a little while to cut to the holes out and get them in the right position. Anyway. Enough waffle, let's crack on. Right then, there is the hole for the third and final servo cut out. That's the one that actually pushes the boom up and down. Uh, all three servos are in place. I'm reasonably happy with the positions. So next up, uh, I'm going to try and do something with the wiring. Um, before I assemble the boom though, I will try and shim up uh, some of these servos here, use a, little, a few little washers just to centralise them in as much as I can in the boom, especially especially this third one here. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do, fire up the soldering iron and uh, start trying to sort the wiring out. So I've cut the hole for the third servo and I'm just putting the wiring in, just using a bit of hot glue in various places just to hold it down. I have actually checked it and it is working. Um, so what I'm going to do now is assemble the actual arm itself. And then what we'll do is quickly test the arm uh, before we shove it back in the excavator. And then I think what's left is to put the bucket on and we've got to put a little bracket uh, to support basically the bottom of this uh, servo rod here. And that actually affixes to the excavator's body. Uh, 
but we're sort of cooking on gas now so on the final stretch um, I'm really looking forward to actually seeing um, what difference these servos actually make right then the arm is back together I'll quickly demonstrate it for you everything seems to be working couple of cock ups during the assembly I had to swap some of the servo wires around because um, the arm was operating in a different direction to the controls on the controller and there are some little nylon bushes that come in the kit and unfortunately uh, I thought there were spacers for to mount the servos but it turns out they're actually bushings for this arm so I did cut some of them up to get the servos to fit a little bit better uh, but I, I think it was just enough for me to salvage uh, a, a bush either side of uh, the bucket but never mind uh, you live and learn uh, next thing to do is actually to mount the arm or the boom back uh, in the digger and we've got to shove this little bracket on and that basically attaches the bottom this bottom servo to the chassis of the excavator and then we're pretty much done then we're pretty, pretty much going to try it so I'll do that Well, that's it back together. Quick test. Uh, everything's working. Right, let's go and try and dig something up with it. Let's have some pros and cons. Cons first, uh, they're not that aesthetically pleasing to look at. These great big uh, black boxes sticking out everywhere. Um, not a big fan of it, but um, it's, you could, if you wanted to, I suppose, paint them yellow, which a lot of people do, and sort of disguise the fact that uh, you've got these great big uh, boxy servos po poking out everywhere. Um, another con is I've I've done this the easy way, really, and the cheap way which is not including any uh, end point stops for the servos uh, you can get little switches uh, so when they when they're depressed or you can get them to to make a circuit when the the boom or the servo gets to a certain point it shuts the servo off and to be honest they really do come in handy because there are a couple of times that once on the bench when i overextended one of the servos and the rod dropped out uh, and there was once outside where um, you could see it puts too, far too much pressure on the plastic components that um, they're attached to so ooh, it's only a matter of time possibly before you break something because these are, these are quite powerful on the pro side um, you've got a damn sight more power it actually will dig I mean it doesn't look much wet sand 
but the old version if you go back and have a look at some of the videos i made uh, the old version with the original servos with the slipper clutches in it wouldn't have even made an attempt uh, to drag any of that sand up it wouldn't even do dry sand let alone wet sand big clumps of wet sand and that had uh, roots in it and weeds and all sorts from because uh, it's been sat there that long uh, so it does actually work. I mean, you can't go digging trenches in your garden and you'd have to have relatively loose soil still. Um, but it is a damn sight more powerful than the original. Right then, would I recommend the server conversion on a Huina excavator? And the answer is absolutely yes. I mean, if you want to do anything at all interested with them, um, they're an absolute must. I mean, they do actually make an expensive metal version with these sort of servos on them already, but they're about 350 quid. I mean, you can pick these excavators up for about 45, 55 pound. The servo kit will cost you about 30. So you're getting what is a reasonable or passable ex little, uh, you know, scale excavator for that money. I mean, if you've seen any of these uh, hydraulic excavators, I mean, they're thousands and thousands of pounds. I mean, they're exquisitely put together. I must admit some of them. And uh, they do actually do a, a, a wide plethora of scale construction activities. Um, uh, but they're just beyond the reach of the average man, I think. I mean, they're six, seven grand, some of them. So they're, they're, they're ferociously expensive. I would, however, recommend that if you're going to do the conversion, that you get some of these little uh, stop switches. Uh, I think I'm going to look at that next uh, because they, they do stop you. or well, they will stop you from wrecking um not only the excavator but uh, the servos themselves anyway if you found this video of some use and interest please give it a big thumbs up and if you're feeling that way inclined hit that subscribe button for more similar future content thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you again soon